Hi everybody, uh, my name is Danielle Utansky and today I am going to be sharing how to bake a challah. Um, I am going to try to work as my grandma taught me and clean up as I go. Um, when you're making challah, things get a little bit messy, but it is a lot of fun. Um, Jewish tradition is uh, different for every person um, and everybody has kind of a different walk of life. Uh, today, when I share about Jewish culture and Jewish traditions, it's gonna be speaking from my own experiences. Um, being a second generation Holocaust survivor is a very huge part of my identity and gives me a lot of pride in being Jewish. Uh, my paternal grandparents actually met at Liberation of Auschwitz and the tradition and culture that they shared and kind of raised me with um, really is a big center of who I am as a person today. So I'm really excited to get to share such a central part of Jewish tradition with you, which is a challah um, at Shabbat, which is every Friday night. You'll often find challah is the first, uh, challah and wine are the first two uh, with the candle lighting uh, prayers that are set. So this is gonna be um, a really fun thing for those of you who are not familiar with the challah bread. Um, Hala is an egg bread, as I said. It has evolved a lot over time. Um, today I'm gonna make a traditional uh, hala. Um, as you can see here, the ingredients are pretty basic. So we're just gonna need some flour, sugar, salt, um, active dry yeast, um, eggs, and oil. Um, we're gonna start by getting our yeast um, activated. Um, to do this, we're gonna use about a package and a half of active dry yeast, and that's about three and a half teaspoons. Okay, we're gonna mix that with about a, a tablespoon of sugar and then one and three quarters cup of lukewarm water. I always give it a quick stir um, and then give it time to dissolve. So once our yeast is activated and we see that with all the bubbles on top, we are going to whisk in our half cup of oil. After our oil is mixed in, we're going to add in um, we're gonna add in our eggs and beat in our eggs one at a time. Staying true to grandma's rule, we're gonna dispose of our eggshells and move to our next step, which is adding the rest of our sugar and adding a tablespoon of salt to our mix. And then it is a half cup of sugar. We're done with our sugar and our salt. All right, so now is the, the time we're gonna gradually add flour to our mix. This is really gonna you know, serve as our binding agent. We're gonna keep adding flour a cup at a time until it kind of stands on its own. The recipe indicates it takes about eight to eight and a half cups before we're there. Um, 
makes it a little easier to stir it up as you go along. It'll give you a better gauge of when you can stop adding flour. Um, I find uh, sometimes you add a little bit more, um, not a problem. If you don't add enough, it gets really tacky and then it becomes difficult to, to manipulate and handle. So uh, don't be shy to add a little extra flour if you're not sure you have enough in there. Now typically I'll keep track of my count. Today I'm just cooking with my heart and feeling it as I go. But as you can see, it's getting a little more tacky now, so I know I'm still not quite there, but I'm going in the right direction. Okay, so now that it's sticking to itself is when we start kneading the dough. Um, so for this, we're gonna put it on a floured surface. Um, you can use a countertop. I find it cleanest to grab a piece of parchment paper. flour generously oh. and transfer our dough here and continue to work it until it's in. We're ready we're gonna transfer our uh, dough into a greased bowl We are going to let it um, rise for about an hour to an hour and a half in a warm area. Often you can use um, an oven that's been preheated to 150 degrees and then turned off. Um, or you can find a warm area that you have in your kitchen. Um, and that's when we'll be ready for braiding. So once our dough is risen, um, with Hala, um, everything about Hala is symbolic. So when Hala kind of started, it started as just kind of an extra piece of bread in the oven, uh, which represented the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem. Um, but like most things in the Jewish religion, um, everything about it is, is, is symbolic. So even with the number of, of braids you put into it, um, uh, there's a lot of different thoughts and ideas of what those mean. Um, I find it really nice to think about all of those symbols um, and, and like with anything you can they can kind of mean as much or as little as you want depending on on your belief. Um, there are some special traditions too depending on specific holidays. Um, Rosh Hashanah for example which is the Jewish New Year instead of the traditional long bread um, it's circular and that represents the con like the continuous nature of time. Um, and the evolution of the season. So um, what you do um, is you take your dough and you separate it. Um, I found it's very important when you're doing this to be very generous with your flour to prevent it from sticking. Um, when um, it can kind of feel tacky, a little bit of extra flour can make it um, easier to manage. So you're gonna want to separate that um, you can do, um, oftentimes there are five uh, lined breads or six lined breads. I'm gonna just do a three, three uh, segmented uh, braid, um, just kind of for ease, um, and it's what I'm used to doing. Um, it can be, this is not for the, the faint of heart, it can be a very dirty and messy experience, but that's kind of part of the fun. It's a great um, you know, task to do. Uh, traditionally on a Shabbat table, um, so every Friday night there are two loaves of challah on the table, um, and that's th that's um, kind of foresight in that on on Saturdays you're not uh, really supposed to work, so it's preparing and it's um, it's a time and it's a mitzvah or a good deed to do to kind of stay connected, um, recharge. Um, being mindful about your time, what you're doing, and and to be honest, um, this is not something that I'm familiar with, but in preparation did a lot of reading, um, and there are actually different prayers and different um, things that you do along the way with each step of making challah. So there's a prayer that you do um, as you start using each of the ingredients, as you start braiding. Um, so there's a lot of intention behind making challah bread. All right, 
right, so now that the egg wash is on the challah, we're gonna put it into our preheated oven. Our oven's preheated to 375 degrees. Um, we're gonna let it bake for about 35 minutes or until it's golden brown. 